Alright, so in my last video, I mentioned that the 50 moving average on the S&P 500, which is this blue line over here, has crossed above the 150 moving average, which is the green line. And historically, whenever the 50 crosses above the 150 and both moving averages have flattened or sloped up, that is the first signal of a new bull market uptrend. And, you know, I got a lot of comments that, Adam, the, the green line's not flat, it's sloping down. No, trust me, I've been doing this for many, many years. The green line was flat. And in fact, after a couple of days, since I posted the video, you can see that the green line indeed is now beginning to slope up. So this is definitely a bull market signal uh, that has been confirmed by the sloping up of the 150 moving average. And I had some interesting comments the last few days like, Adam, why is the market going down? You say it's a bull market. Why did the market go down for three days? Dude, in a bull market, the price doesn't go up every day. It goes through ups and downs, right? So remember that you're gonna have, you know, up and down and up and down and up and down. It doesn't go up in a straight line. And also remember that, uh, you know, once big institutional investors and market makers, they recognize that it's a new bull market, they want to start buying stocks. But what they want to do is they want to manipulate the markets to push the price down temporarily to kind of like shake out the weak hands so that weak hands get shaken out, they sell in panic, hits their stop losses, and the big institutions will then buy the stocks at a lower price before pushing it up higher because they don't want the price to go up too fast. And this was a perfect example. After you see this bull market confirmation, this was a very nice example of a shakeout, shaking out the weak hands and then, you know, uh, pushing the market higher again. Now, do bear in mind, I also mentioned that when the 50 crosses above the 150, it's a 90% uh, confirmation of a bull market. It's not 100%, it's 90%. Okay, so there's still 10% where it could still fail. Always remember that. Now, if the market or the price can close above the 200 moving average, which is this red line, and the 200 moving average starts to slope up, which has not happened yet. You can see the 200 is still sloping down. Only when the 200 slopes up, then that's a 95% confirmation of the bull market. So we're at 90%, not yet 95%. And if the price of the S&P 500 is able to close above this level, which is about one, about 4189. Now, why 4189? Because that represents a 20% uh, close above the lows. Now, if the market can close above this level, that's a 100% confirmation of the bull market. So it's 90% right now, not at 100%, but there are a lot of other indicators that are really supporting the fact that this is the new bull market. So for example, What's interesting is if you look at the uh, S&P Equal Weighted Index. Now, remember what, what that means. Now, the S&P 500 Index is made up of the 500 biggest companies in America, but they're not equally weighted. So, for example, in the S&P 500, you've got companies like Apple that has a higher market capitalization, so they have more weight to the index whereas another company would have a lower weight to the index. So when the big weighted stocks, like for example, Apple and Amazon, they are not going up as fast, they are kind of like pulling down the index averages. But if you look at an equal weighted S&P index, that means all the 500 companies are weighted equally regardless of their market cap, it gives you a better uh, sense as to whether the 500 companies are actually on a new uptrend or are they still on a downtrend. So if you take a look at the S&P Equal Weighted Index ETF, which is RSP, put in RSP, right, there we are. This is the S&P 500 Equal Weighted ETF where 500 companies are equally weighted. So you can actually see are the 500 companies really in a new bull market. And if you look at this ETF, you can see that the 50 moving average has crossed above the 150 moving average. They are both sloping up very nicely and it's close way above its 200 moving average. Although again, the 200 is still sloping down. We need that to slope up to again, get that 95% confirmation. But if you look at the price action, you can see that it already has made higher highs. Remember the definition would be higher highs and higher lows. We've got this, you know, high, low, high, low, high, 
and low, right? So we've got higher highs, we've got higher lows, we've in fact got three higher highs and higher lows, which based on price action theory is a change of a trend. Now, the other interesting thing to note would be, um, if you take a look at this, let's go back to the S&P 500. Okay, and you can see again, since the bear market started, it has not been able to break this trend line resistance. This is still a, you know, a very strong resistance, right? So it hits that resistance, comes down, hits it, comes down, hits it. Now, the interesting thing is you can see that uh, it failed here. It failed here after the market made a new low, right? Made a new low, went up, failed, came down, made a new low, went up, failed, came down, made a new low. Now, this time, what's different? This time, notice that af after, let me just kind of like get rid of this. Notice that this time, after hitting this resistance, it never made a new low. It came down halfway, found support here, and now it's retesting that again. So this is what's different about this test. Never made a new low. Now on top of that, let me show you, um, we, let's put in the US dollar index, which is basically the US dollar strength, right? Let's put this into a new pane. And you can notice the difference in the US dollar index and why this is different. Let me just kind, of, kind of like draw a trend line over here. Now, remember that when you get a weak US dollar, it is good for stocks. Weak US dollar is very bullish for equities. Why? Because remember that when the dollar gets stronger, companies that bring in profits from overseas, it converts to yet less US dollars. So it lowers their profits. And that's why, for example, companies like Amazon and Microsoft and Alphabet, they reported lower profits and lower sales because of the strong dollar. But now that the dollar is weakening, it will cause the reverse, right? A weakening, weakening dollar means that when companies make money overseas, they bring it back to the US, it translates to more US dollars. So that's a tailwind for the coming uh, earning season, right? You'll result in higher profits, higher sales, and higher cash flow. Now, notice that again, during this bear market, whenever the, the, the market went up, hit that resistance and came down, hit it, came down, right? The US dollar was on a very strong uptrend. The dollar was getting stronger and stronger and stronger because of uh, the, raise, the rise of the 10-year yield. But this time, notice what's interesting. This time when the S&P went up to hit that resistance, what happened to the US dollar? The US dollar has now broken its trend line and the US dollar is now free falling. And that's good for US stocks. A weak dollar is good for US equities. And that's why you can see that this time we could be getting that, that leverage to kind of like push through uh, this level of resistance there. Again, it's not, not happened yet. Let's wait and see. But I'm pretty optimistic that there's a good chance that we could break this resistance this time. Now, please always remember that there are no guarantees in the market. In the market, anything can happen. Please write this down burn it into your brain. Whether you are an investor or trader, anything can happen in the markets. No one can predict the markets with 100% certainty. Why? Because there are just too many moving parts. There are too many unknown variables. We cannot predict tomorrow's news or the news next week or next month. And of course, when news come out, you know, all bets are off. News can totally change the economic or political situation in the markets. Like for example, if uh, you know, Xi Jinping suddenly becomes best friends with Putin and they decide on an alliance to attack Taiwan or, you know, China joins in the war in Ukraine. Oh my God, the market's obviously going to go back into a bear market. There ain't going to be any bull market. Oops, sorry, wrong, wrong picture. Sorry. This was Putin's ex-girlfriend. This one. Right? So again, anything can happen. So I keep saying that, you know, as an investor, remember that anything can happen in the short term. But if you hold on to quality companies, these companies will always bounce back over time. And that's why as an investor, you never want to borrow money to invest, never invest on leverage so that any short term volatility, you have the holding power and only invest with money that you don't need to use in the short term. And as a trader, remember that anything can happen. So always risk 
a small percentage of your capital on any trade and always have your stop losses in place, always have your profit targets in place. When I hear some people get really upset, they say, Adam, you said the market was going up, you said the market was going down, and it didn't, and I lost a lot of money, money, right? So when people say things like that, what's their problem? Their problem is always about risk management. Their problem is about, as an investor, lack of you know, diversification, for example, or their problem is that they invest money which they need, which you should never do, or they are highly leveraged. And when the markets go down temporarily, they get forced out of the markets. They are forced to sell by the broker. When the markets go up, eventually they're not there anymore. Or as a trader, they over risk or they don't have a stop loss. So remember that the key to successful investing and trading is not about making predictions and getting them right. You know, a lot of these forecasts I make are really for intellectual stimulation and entertainment. Ultimately, my investment and trading decisions have nothing to do with my, my forecast or predictions. My investment decisions have to do with the fundamentals of the in individual companies. I diversify. So in the short term, even if it goes up and down, I don't really care. If it goes down, I buy some more. Over time, it always goes up. I always get richer over time with quality companies. In my trading, same thing. I risk very small percentage of my capital. I only risk maximum 1% of my capital on any single trade. So even if I'm wrong, I, I just lose 1%, that's it. I've got my stop losses in place, I've got my profit targets in place. So for those of you who are new to the markets, remember, as you watch my channel or other channels, you know, bear in mind, it's all about risk management. It's all about, you know, staying in the game long enough to allow your investments and trades uh, to generate well for you. Now, let's talk about the next big elephant in the room that the media is now fixated on. Now remember that there's always something in the world to worry about and the media will always find the next thing for you to worry about, for you to freak out about. And of course, the next thing that everyone's talking about right now is the US government has once again hit its debt ceiling limit. So you guys know that the US government, well, not just the US government, but many governments around the world, they spend a lot more than they earn. So the, the Treasury Department of the US government, they have to keep issuing new debt all the time in order to fund government spending. Now, that's usually not a problem. So it, since 1917, uh, Congress has put in a debt ceiling that says you can't borrow more than a certain amount. But every time that amount is reached, they just simply raise that debt ceiling. So usually, again, that's not an issue. They've been raising the debt ceiling over 90 times throughout the year. So you can see uh, every time the debt ceiling is reached, they just simply raise the debt ceiling, issue more debt, borrow more money, and the government keeps spending. Now, there's always a question that people ask, Adam, are you, uh, you know, afraid of this ever-growing US debt? No, because they will always be able to pay their debt as long as Congress agrees to raise the debt ceiling. Remember that the US government has the ability to, to uh, to print money, to keep issuing debt. So yeah, they can go on perpetually. But of course, by doing that, the US dollar loses its value over time. We call that devaluation. And that, of course, leads to you know, long-term inflation. But that, again, happens to all countries like Europe and, and, and China and so on and so forth. So that's why it's really important as an investor that it's important to have hold enough cash for short-term needs. But in the long run, you have to invest cash into productive assets like real estate, like quality companies, equities that will be a hedge against inflation. But that's a topic for another day. Now, so again, usually this is not an issue. But once in a while, this becomes a problem if Congress doesn't, doesn't agree to raise the debt ceiling on time. And that happens when there's gridlock in Congress. And usually that happens when the Republicans have a slight edge over the Democrats because the Republicans always like to use this as a bargaining tool to say that, okay, if we agree to raise the debt ceiling, then Democrats have to reduce government spending. But the Democrats say, no, we don't want to reduce government spending. So they fight and fight and fight and fight and they negotiate. And usually they, they play chicken with one another, right? It's a game of chicken where, you know, None of us going to move. We are not going to compromise until they realize at the last minute, shit, we have to raise the debt ceiling because not, both parties, they don't want the US government to run out of 
France, they don't want the government, government to default because if the whole US government defaults, then that'll be catastrophic for the whole economy and the market system. So they don't want that to, ha that to happen. So they always will find a way to resolve it at the last minute. But there have been times in the past where uh, it's come really close, right? Where they couldn't agree to the last minute and that created short-term volatility in the market. So could that happen again this time? Maybe. But not just yet. The shit will hit the fan in June. So from now to June, uh, the US Treasury Department, they still have some money to keep the government spending. But they'll run out of money by June. So by June, Congress, the Republicans and Democrats, they have to find a solution to this. So again, there were two times in recent history when the market became ver very volatile when an agreement was reached too late or at, at the last minute. So let's take a look at these two scenarios. So the first scenario um, was back in 2011. So this was uh, 5th August 2011 when they again couldn't agree and the US government looked like they couldn't pay their bills and S&P, which is the credit rating agency, for the first time in history, they downgraded the US government debt from triple A rating to double A plus rating. So when this news came out, the markets freaked out. Oh my God, right? And you can see that the markets plunged. This was called, if I'm not wrong, called Black Monday on the 8th of August, right? Markets plunged 10% in a week because of the news. By the way, the market was already down 10% for other reasons. The market was down 10% because of the European debt crisis. But this itself caused the market to drop 10%. But of course, eventually they sorted it out and the market went up 59% in the next 12 months. And it happened again in 2013 when again they played chicken, right? And, and the government shut down uh, for 16 days where government uh, workers didn't get their salaries, parks were closed down and they were like playing chicken all the way to the end. Now this time the markets went down as well, but they went down about 4% and then they proceeded to go up you know, 20, 30% over the next couple of months, right? So the lesson to learn is that, you know, whenever this, this kind of thing happens, is it something to panic about or something to take advantage of? And the answer is it is something to take advantage of. As an investor, if this creates short-term volatility, take advantage of it to buy high quality companies when they are short-term panicking and selling off. Now specifically, which stocks will be most affected by this? they'll be the companies whose revenue comes from government funding, especially the defense companies like Boeing, Lockheed Martin, uh, General Dyma Dynamics, Raytheon, as well as healthcare companies like United Health uh, and CVS, which is um, another healthcare company. So usually these companies will go down a lot during this short period of time and it's your chance and my chance to pick up stocks, these companies at temporary discounts because they will always sort it out at the end of the day and then the market's going to bounce back higher, right? Again, like I said, this problem would uh, really hit the fan sometime in June. That's when the government will run out of money. So by that time, we should have the markets on a clear uptrend where the, again, the 50 moving average is above the 150 moving average. And, you know, hopefully by that time, the market is above the 200 moving average and it's a very, very clear bull run. So again, on a bull run, don't expect prices to go up every day, every week. They will still go through your wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down. So again, if this happens in June, they're playing chicken, expect a wave down, great buying opportunity to catch the next wave up. So again, there's always something to worry, worry about in the world. Uh, let other people worry and profit from the worries of other people. Never let a great crisis go to waste. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. If you want to catch my latest videos, click on the subscribe button right now. Click on the bell so you get instant notifications once I upload my latest video. If you want to check out my online courses, go to piranaprofits.com. We're going to learn how to invest and how to trade the financial markets and create an income from all around the world. If you want to join my live Wealth Academy program, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com and find out more about how you can learn investing and trading live online. This is Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.